please welcome Harry Garside. Harry, thanks so much for coming in, mate. Uh, there's times you come into work and you're excited, but today I've just got a little bit more of a pep in my step. Really excited to have a chat, buddy. Up and about. No, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, pumped to be here. Now, obviously, you heard in the opener, a bit of boxing going on from your side, but I'm not sure if you've been made aware. I'm having my first bout on December 1st. Mate, we love to hear that. I'm a <laughs> firm believer every human should experience this once in their life. At least once? At least once. See, how, are you feeling good right now? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I've been a little bit under the weather. I've had spring racing. I've had AFL grand finals. So I've probably trained off a little bit. Okay. But I've got is two and a half weeks prime time to get fit. Two and a half weeks, plenty of time. Plenty <laughs> of time, mate. You just got to have like positive thoughts now. Although I'm sure you're nervous as. Like it's so standard. I remember my first one, I was 12 years old. Terrifying. <laughs> Are you talking boxing bout or sort of schoolyard? For a first boxing oh, professional. Bout. Yeah, yeah, first boxing bout was when I was 12 and I was absolutely terrified. Oh. So I can't imagine how you're feeling, mate. But it's all about trying your best to have like as many positive thoughts over the next couple of weeks. See, I've got a little bit of an issue and the trainer says this, that I'm obviously playing football. I don't mind getting hit in the head too often. But every now and then I've got a duck a punch, like just rather than copying them. Uh, it, you know, any advice in around that? The old Homer Simpson. You've seen that episode. <laughs> yeah. Just ties his ties them out. out. Yeah. If I painted myself yellow, I could get there. Um, <laughs> In all seriousness, though, how are you? What's going on in your professional boxing career? Mate, I'm very well. I'm um, two weeks out actually today from the uh, Olympic qualifiers over in the Solomon Islands, so I'm 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 well in prep as well. So I'm feeling good. Uh, it's been a great preparation so far, and and to to qualify this side of Christmas will be ideal. And and I'm feeling good right on track for myself. What, what sort of camp time have you been? To be honest, it's been like. I haven't really stopped for the last three, four months, mate. It's been a very, very um, consistent uh, road up, up the hill, and I'm feeling really, really good. Like, my weight's good, boxing well. Um, we were in Europe a couple of weeks ago, so I feel like I've had a, a great prep. No no problems here, mate. Just going to make sure I do the job over, over, over there in two weeks. What do you weigh in at? So I fight at 63 and a half. Kilos. But, yeah, but I probably walk around <laughs> at like 69 sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Because you're a tall dude. Like you're not the shorter <laughs> side. You're not certainly not going to be a jockey, but you're sort of weighing in around there. Mate, I look like, I, I remember asking someone a question. I'm like, what sport do you think I play? And they said, uh, um, marathon runner. I look like a marathon runner. I definitely don't look like a boxer, mate. I look like a greyhound. Well, <laughs> I'd probably go a bit harder than one. Uh, chasing gold, obviously. You've spoken a little bit throughout what I've heard about uh, Olympic bronzes and things like that and the motivation to keep you going. Is that still burning as hard as ever? Absolutely, mate. The, the big focus, obviously, this side of Christmas is just making sure we qualify. We get three chances internationally to qualify. This is the first one. Make sure you qualify this side of Christmas. Have a little break. Give me a bit of Christmas ham, a bit of a beer with dad on Christmas Day. It would be fantastic. <laughs> haven't, had, haven't celebrated Christmas in about six years. So it'd be good to have a beer with me, old man, this side of Christmas. And then um, and then next year is just the, the, the journey to the, the Olympic gold medal. But yeah. more importantly, mate, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mate, we're two weeks out from a massive, massive fight of yours. I, I'm actually fine. Uh, usually, you know, from back in the day, I would have had to have done the preparation to have levels of confidence. But, uh, I, you know, three by two minutes, I think I could stumble through at some <laughs> stage. And 20-ounce gloves and headgear, I think I'll be completely fine. Um, talking about sort of, you know, professional athletes and the drive to keep going, how do you keep yourself motivated and so positive? Because everything I've heard from you and about you, and I did not try to do too much research in terms of listening on podcasts and whatnot that you've spoken about, but everything seems so positive from how you talk about not just boxing, but also life. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like I think we all experience highs and lows in life, right? And and it's inevitable that at times throughout a year, throughout a month, you're going to have shit days, you're going to have tough days, you're going to have tough weeks sometimes. You hope, Hopefully not tough, too many tough months, but it happens. That's life. But I think I'm really fortunate that I'm really curious. Curious. I always want to grow, get better, develop. I do what I love. You mean I'm, I'm really fortunate that I was a tradesman for a few years after school and I'm very happy now that I can – you mean keep myself afloat just through boxing and, and, and I'm really grateful that I've worked really hard from the age of nine to, to get to this position now. And if I ever complain about my life, I always think back to the days when I was working for 450 bucks a week as a tradie. <laughs> so I can never complain that I'm waking up every single day. Yes, there's hard times. Yes, there's hard days, but I, I get to do what I love every day and, and I'm really grateful for that. So, so I, I guess I can't not be happy. You mentioned the Solomon Islands, South Africa, Germany, Italy, Japan, you potentially could be going to Paris. You're a bloke from Lilydale. Do you ever sit back and just reflect on how you've got so far so early? I mean, you're only 26 years old. 
Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I'm sure you probably felt this too, um, Daisy. It's a, it's an interesting thing. I think as athletes, we're always chasing the next thing. I think humans do this so much. Like we're always chasing the next thing, whether it be the new car, the new house, the new thing. Uh, and I feel like that too. Very rarely do I sit back and actually just reflect on, geez, I've had a massive journey. Yeah. Always searching for the next thing, I guess, to, uh, to remind myself that I'm alive, my heart's beating and, and that I'm in this. And I'm sure that you're feeling the full <laughs> spectrum of animal instincts, uh, since you're two weeks out as well. Are you a goal setter? Are you a manifester? Or are you all of those things? Absolutely. I think, um, you mean, I, I have all these alarms on my phone. I love doing it. I have about probably 20 alarms throughout the day and each alarms for something different and a lot of them are just closing my eyes and visualizing myself standing on top of the podium. And I think the more you can think about it, the more you can be obsessed about it, the more that you can put it in your psyche consistently throughout your day, throughout your months. I think the more it's going to come into your reality. And that's just my belief. Where did this sort of curiosity about taking your mind to different spots start from? That's a good question. I think the Reach Foundation is a massive organization. Jimmy right. Scientist Foundation, mm -hmm. they entered my life when I was 16 years old and I'm a massive advocate for the work that they did because they really helped me build my emotional intelligence, which I think is quite, a lot of young boys don't, I'm not saying they don't have it, but it's just like, it's not, it's not fested in young boys as much. And I think the Reach Foundation really uh, helps me build my emotional intelligence, which, which is fantastic. Underrated skill, of course, you know, not only understanding yourself, but why others are in and around and like that. Just being curious. I think I truly believe curiosity is the biggest thing to having a more positive mindset. Just being curious about why people think the way they do, why you think the way you do. And when you, or when I've been curious myself, I'm not like judging myself for an action or I'm not judging other people for an action. I'm just curious about why they do that or why I do that. Like there's so much programming that goes into the decisions we make and the, the beliefs that we have. But if you're curious, you can start sort of challenging them a little bit. I think you and I obviously have a fair bit in common, not just because we're both champion boxers or on our way to <laughs> Olympic gold, but we also uh, spent some time in the jungle, not together, different seasons. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of there. How was that experience for you? And what was the weirdest shit they made you eat? <laughs> Mate, it was a, it was a wild time. I only did one of the, uh, the food challenges. I, I can't remember. It was like a smoothie. I think it was, um, what was it? It was like a smoothie of all cows intestines oh. and I'm not going to lie. I actually went down pretty well. I lost, <laughs> I lost a lot of weight in the jungle. So I was happy to just get any nutrients <laughs> in my body. <laughs> what an experience it was though. Like I think, you know, I started boxing at the age of nine, just a boy from Lillardale and I'm mm. like, geez, you never think you're going to be doing stuff like that. Bumping shoulders with Peter Hallier and, and people like that. So I, I was stoked to be a part of it. Did you have a cool crew? Cause I think that makes it so much easier or harder depending. My mum my and dad watch it every year. They love it. And they, although I am their son, so I'm sure that probably plays into it, but they said it was the best crew that they, they've watched in a few years. So, yeah. um, I was really fortunate that, that I got along with, with everyone in there and, um, I mean, it's a long month. If you, if you don't like someone, <laughs> you're going to wake up next. <laughs> Got to pray that Australia votes them out. After that, obviously the highs of, you know, uh, the national brand growing, I guess, and more exposure, but also then you come off the plane. And as we all saw throughout, uh, a really difficult time, I imagine throughout your life. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting because I think that was the first time in my life I faced proper adversity. And I think Every other adversity I'd faced prior to that, I'd almost played a part in that. You mean you fail in sport, you play a role in that. You fail in in other things in life, I, I played a role in it. And I think to walk into that, it was it was challenging, it was tough, but also as well, I think all that I've learned throughout my my sporting career really helps me in that. And I um I'm really grateful. Like I turned 26 this year, and I feel like I finally turned into a man. And I think it's because of that situation. And I. Um, it was tough. It was challenging. My back was against the wall, but also as well, I had my own back in that time and I did all the right things and I feel like I'm, I'm finally reaping the rewards. What about, we've spoken a little bit before about potentially being a tradie. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> a uh, terrible one. Uh, yeah, uh, what, what were you doing as a tradie? So I, I finished school and I started working my dad as a roof tiler. So I did that for about a year. And then I, um, and then I was a plumber for two years and I was terrible at both of them. Uh, so I'm grateful now that, that boxing is, is my pathway. Did you still sort of have these thoughts when you were a tradie, like in terms of the deeper thoughts and deeper connections and the way you view life? Because no doubt at Smoko, it could have been interesting <laughs> having a couple of chats with the blokes who were smashing dare ice coffees in a pie. Yeah. That's the thing, <laughs> mate. I've always been the weird one in my family and my, my family, just a bunch of tradies and, and in my friendship group, just, just all tradies. So when I'm bringing some of the things that I think about into the conversation, they always know that that's just how I am. And I, um, I almost like, I think it's really good to have a mindset like mine, but then also be around those people as well, just to realize that. We're all so complex and unique. And I think when you get stuck in a little cesspool of the, like the people, you, your products or your environment and just 
just realizing that like humans are just, you mean, going through life and just going paycheck to paycheck and just trying to keep their head above, above water. And not everyone thinks as deeply as I do and not everyone, and that's okay. And that's a beautiful thing too. And, um, I know the people I grew up with have got the biggest hearts and they will always, if I needed anything, they would always help me out. And I, and I love being around the people I grew up with. Do you ever wonder if you do get to achieving your goals, if there ever be sort of a, a ceiling on that? <laughs> That's a good question. My mum always <laughs> asked me that. <laughs> I, well, just, um, from, just from personal experience, right? So as a, a young kid, all I wanted to do was play in an AFL grand final, win a grand final at 22 years of age that achieved it. Mm. And then there's your life goal done at 22. And you're almost like, okay, where to from here? I listened to a podcast on this and the quote was, you've already achieved goals you said would make you happy. You mean, and I think there's, I think the capitalist mindset is, you mean this if and when mindset, when I get that promotion, I'll be happy. When I get that grand final, I'll be happy. When I get that gold medal, I'll be happy. That if and when mindset. And I've already achieved things that I thought were going to be the things that were going to make me happy. And I think I'm, I'm realizing now that no, no goal, no ambition, no, no car, no materialistic thing, no gold medal will actually make me happy. It's how you feel about yourself. And I actually think that I become the best version of myself and I feel best about myself when I actually am chasing my goals anyway. So it plays hand in hand, but just realizing that win, lose or draw next July in Paris, I um, it's not going to change or affect my self-worth in any way, shape or form. As we sit here right now, do you have a moment throughout your life that you're most proud of? Oh, that is a great question. I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm hitting you with the deep stuff. No, I love right. it, mate. I'm a deep thinker. And I, there's actually one, it's more around, I think, you mean, I didn't, I didn't plan on, I guess, getting a little bit of public recognition or anything like that, but I, I'm proud of myself more so for how I show up when someone recognizes me on the street. Yeah. I'm proud of myself that I have never once turned my back on someone if they've asked for something. I've never once turned my back on someone if they wanted a photo, if they wanted a handshake, if they wanted to chat. And I'm proud of myself for that. I literally had that down there as how do you handle fame now? Because it's obviously a long way from being a boxer, but also you're on the project at times. You've been on GQ for different things, wearing different outfits and expressing yourself in different ways. Is there any negative criticism that comes to you or people being negative in the street in and around that? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think it's do with, deal with that. It's tough. It's challenging. And there's what, what people don't realize is like, you can put people up on a pedestal just because you see them on in the media or, or stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I'm no different to anyone else on the, on the street. And I mean, I feel things just like everyone else. And, um, you mean, I'm human just like everyone else. And I think, um, yeah, it's tough. It's challenging at times, but also as well, like I truly believe that the more you can just reinforce that, like there's way more positivity in this world than there is negativity. And I know we, we remember the negative way more, but like we live in the best country in this planet. Like we're so lucky to live here. So much opportunity. I've got people around me. I love people around me who always support me and people are going to love me. People are going to hate me. And, and I'm just grateful. I've got some amazing people around me who will always support me. So that's the most Such important. a great mindset to have. You're obviously super driven, super clear on your path. I think as athletes, you have to have some sort of addictive personality to rock up every day, day in, day out and chase those dreams. Has that ever affected you in different ways? Mental health? you know, outside of chasing your dreams? So it's really interesting addiction. It's, it's something that has run in my family and I, and I truly believe that it's like the untalked about thing in our society. I think we're all in a sense addicted to things. And yes, there's the identifiable addicts, like, like drug, drug addiction or drinking or gambling, but it's like, I mean, a lot of us spend way too much time on social media, on our phones, yep. eating, consuming. That's an addiction too. Right. And it's like, I think not many people talk about it, but I've grappled with that my whole life and it's, it's like that, just chasing that thing to, to remind myself that I'm alive, that I'm here, that my life's not boring, that I'm, I'm living with purpose, with passion. Um, sometimes that gets overwhelming, but I'm grateful that I'm very aware of it and I can, I feel like I have a good grip on it, but at times absolutely it does take hold of me. As we are just working through this and we need to wrap it up at some stage, four years from now, what are we saying about Harry Garside? Four years from now, I'll be Olympic gold medalist. Um, I'm hoping I have a property by the water. Um, and I hope that I've had my first kid. How good. How good is that, mate? Thank you so much for speaking with us. I wish we could go on for longer. All the very best with what's to come in this exciting future of yours. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in and have a chat. Mate, more importantly, thanks for having me on and all the best in two weeks, mate. <laughs> Fools, oh, oh, oh. You just punched the microphone. <laughs> Australian Olympic medal boxer Harry Garside on the Rush Hour Summer Edition. Triple M.